Welcome back to Smart Money. We're here talking to Anish Savakle, the Deputy CIO of Equity and Head of Research at ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund about innovation in investing and what different sectors are going through in terms of innovation and how you can use this knowledge to make your investment decisions as well. Anish, before the break, we were talking about several sectors, right? I want to focus on NBFCs because there's a lot happening here and it's sometimes uh, very hard to keep up because the competition is, uh, you know, there is competition from NBFC players to the banks. Banks are eating a lot of the market share. There are these new age tech companies coming through as well, fintech companies. So tell us what is the radical innovation that's taking place in NBFCs? See, what is driving that innovation? And I'm not saying it will be successful. In, in fact, I'm fairly skeptical about how successful it will be. Is that you've got much more data about individual customers to help you make hopefully smarter decisions, right? Uh, and what we are seeing is a lot of financial institutions using that data to arrive at lending decisions. Uh, but I think here is, is one place where we at least are cautious about, uh, about its ultimate uh, outcome because in when you're lending, you have to judge both the ability to pay and the willingness to pay. Mm. And you have to have mechanisms, collection mechanisms, to collect money if the willingness to pay is missing on the consumer's behalf. Mm. Right? So a lot of the data that we get is about the ability to pay. Right? Willingness to pay will be tested when people choose to act difficult. Mm. And my concern right now in the NBFC space is a lot of NBFCs have not built in the collection costs mm. that will come up when there is stress in, in lending. Right? Okay. So lending always looks good while you're growing very fast. And while it's the economy when, is growing. While the economy is growing. But it's when the collection is required, right, that particularly in unsecured lending, we'll, 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 uh, the jury is still out. Right? Okay. So yes, there is innovation, but some of it may... Uh, may not prove to live up to the hype that is being So for developed. someone who's perhaps looking to invest based on innovation, you would suggest otherwise, that to be cautious in the NBFC space? Because so you, again, you'll have to be very selective if you want to invest in, uh, in NBFCs. Mm. I, I think, and that's, that's one of the things that happens, right? There's a genuine innovation. It excites, it creates too much excitement initially, attracts too much mm. capital. You have a period of, of churn and then eventually a more stable structure mm. emerges, right? So my point here is not that there's uh, all NBFCs will not do well or anything like that, but to say that one has to be very careful in, this is a bit like retailing, right? When you thought retailing is all about stores, I mm. said, right? Mm. And it's not all about stores. Similarly, NBFCs are not all about disbursements, right? We haven't really tested the collection aspect of, of these NBFCs yet. so. Okay. Some skepticism is, is okay. Justified. Any other areas where there's massive innovation happening, which is perhaps something investors should know? Well, actually, uh, I, I want to step away from this notion of massive innovation in a particular sector. Okay. Right. I think innovation is happening across sectors. Leave aside a few, right? Like commodities, where there's very little room for innovation. A commodity company, if it has a low cost mine or a low cost oil source, can do well even without innovating. Mm. Right. But in other businesses. Uh, almost as a rule, right? If you look at companies that would be gaining market share, there would be they would be innovators, okay. right? Whether it's financial services, whether it's retailing, whether it's consumer goods. If you keep making the same, same fan, same mixy, whatever, you're not going to win, right? So all, in almost every sector, right, you can see that innovation is happening. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you have a fund, uh, there's an NFO, the ICICI Prudential Innovation Fund. So, tell us a little bit about that. I want to understand more about what kind of companies will you be investing in? Uh, you know, what is the time frame? Because, you know, these kind of thematic funds, the concern is that, uh, you know, A, there's a lot of disruption happening. So, what happens then? I mean, is it like a 12-month time frame, 18-month time frame where you revisit then? And uh, what kind of returns can one expect? If they invest in a fund like okay, this. The last question is easier to, <laughs> easiest to answer because I'm not going to answer it. But, but uh, uh, more seriously, uh, look, as I said, right, uh, like two years back or even a year back, we thought all the opportunities are in the value space. Mm. By value space, in simple terms, it means companies that are struggling but will recover. Mm. right? And growth was being overvalued. Now we think the opportunities are more evenly balanced because the growth uh, companies have corrected a lot. Expectations have become more realistic. Mm. Now, coming to you know how you think about returns. See, typically when you uh, when you're buying innovative companies, you would be paying a premium, mm. right? Now, and then I'm I, uh, what I'm not uh, in agreement with is this notion that hey, these companies will do well five years later, 
right? Actually, but you if don't I'm generally pay a premium always, right? I mean, just to give you an example, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Say a Tata Motors, right? Mm -hmm. They are innovating in a big way. They're doing EVs. They have, you know, they're doing very well over there. But the stock is still so trading. I, I can't talk at about a specific stocks. Discount to have. its, uh, you know, historic valuation. This is just an example. Yeah. But I'm saying it's not. You don't always end up paying yeah. a premium. So there are some exceptions, and uh, I'm sure there are some exceptions. And these exceptions, without going into the specifics of a company, could be that a company, innovative company, has some balance sheet issues, etc. Or okay. while it's innovating, the cycle is very negative. The mm. industry cycle is very negative. Mm. So those will always be there but mm. in general you'll find that you, if you're so you either buying struggling companies or you're buying the winners mm. right when you're buying the winners you will be paying a premium okay, okay. Right? in general one should go yeah. in with that mindset but my logic the way we think about it is that when you're paying a premium you have to be more demanding mm. about how they meet expectations right mm. so it's not about sitting around and saying oh five years later this company will do well it's about saying look what is this company committing to deliver and is it delivering quarter after quarter after quarter? If it's repeatedly disappointing, you have to revisit your thesis. Okay, okay. Right. Just to summarize then, before we let you go and before we end the show, any final thoughts on what the big innovation could be perhaps? What the big disruptors could be, say, in the next well, one I year? I think uh, certainly there will be uh, disruption in the energy space. There will be disruption in the transportation space. That is for sure. Mm. But there will also be disruption, not disruptions, but huge changes, particularly when you look back over 10 years that take place across a broad set of industries. Mm. And some companies will do better at it than others. Okay, on that note, we will wrap up with this discussion. Thanks a lot, Anish, for joining us Thanks, here Sonia. in Thanks the studio. Yeah. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Keep writing to us. We love receiving feedback from you. Have a great weekend.